Uh, in this talk, I will um, uh, basically, first of all, go through some basics of uh, Rydberg atoms. So for um, people you don't know much, hopefully, about Rydberg atoms. So this is a kind of a very quick introduction for people you already know. It's a reminder or you just have to bear with me a little. And then I uh, go on very quickly, very quickly, a um, few interesting directions, our current uh, research with Rydberg atom. And then I'll go on to discuss some our recent results on Rydberg atoms uh, in research in our lab. So some basic of Rydberg atoms. So um, pretty much I believe everyone knows about uh, Rydberg atoms are highly excited uh, state um, atoms, uh, sorry, the atoms with uh, at least one electron in very highly excited states. So there's the energy level of hydro hydrogen atoms and here is the energy level of rubidium. So, uh, essentially, as far as highly excited states, which are Rydberg states, they're uh, pretty much very same to each other, except the one difference, of course, the alkaline atoms, uh, which um, is not a single proton positive charge, but a core of total charge E, e plus. Therefore, uh, one electron coming close to uh, the atomic core, their energy level will be somewhat uh, uh, um, uh, reduced the energy. So this is where you see this kind of an energy level for low L states which uh, somewhat uh, reduce somewhat slightly to uh, high L states which are similar to uh, hydrogen atom. So and then this is a uh, well de described by this so-called quantum defect. Therefore if you look at this bonding energies and accept the defect part they're very similar to uh, 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 hydrogen atom energy you learn in quantum, uh, basic quantum mechanics. The exalted property of Rydberg atom is really is a large size because uh, as we know the size of uh, uh, the atom uh, depends on uh, which state they are which is proportional to n square and therefore if we have n equal to 100 you have an at atom size which is um, um, one micron compared to ground state hydrogen, which is only half uh, Armstrong. And then of course, long lifetime as well. And also probably most importantly is a very large dipole moment and which again proportional to N square, which is well, uh, naturally because it's uh, proportional to the, the size of atom in a classical sense. Therefore, you were looking at N equal to 100, we have a um, dipole moment of 10,000 compared to uh, uh, the, uh, the dipole moment of water molecules with only about a two divide. So, and then this is a really exaggerated uh, large dipole moment give the properties of a kind of uh, exaggerated property of Rydberg atom, which is very strongly coupled to external field and also very strongly coupled uh, to each other through long range dipolar interaction. Many interesting physics basically coming from this uh, two point. And uh, then uh, I will just quickly go through the production detection of Rydberg atoms. Of course, nowadays the, uh, it's people use uh, lasers to make excitations uh, uh, to Rydberg state. Typically, are two um, photon excitation because it's usually one photon only uh, need a UV laser, which is uh, difficult to handle, and uh, usually uh, two photon excitation. Also, another thing to keep in mind about <coughs> is the. Uh, um, selection rules of which states to excite. And uh, the detection of Rydberg atoms, uh, the traditional way of detecting is field ionization because as you can see, this is uh, a Coulomb potentials. Uh, the ground states are somewhat here and those are highly excited Rydberg states. If you have an external field and uh, of course there's nothing uh, much, um, no much effect on ground state, but uh, the highly excited state you can see can escape from the uh, trapping potential. And uh, they escape electrons and uh, can be accelerated and reach the um, multi-channel uh, place to be detected. And uh, another is if we reach the ionization field uh, in this kind of uh, slowly uh, wrapping it on, the different states you can see here being uh, ionized at the different part of this uh, uh, ionization field slope and uh, then you can they can be time resolved um, uh, in the time of, time of fly uh, uh, signal. So, and this is a typical way. Of course, the, the field uh, need to ionize the Rydbergs only about um, a few hundred or a few thousand volts per centimeter, which is quite easily available uh, in laboratory. And this is some kind of pictures where you have cold atom. This is a uh, two grill 
which you can put the electric field on, and the electron being ionized can be stripped out to the MCP detector. Um, so this is, again, very quick review about Rydberg atoms in external field. And so I won't say too much because um, this is a reasonably basic, um, most of you know. So essentially, uh, this is a stark map of uh, rubidium Rydberg atoms. Uh, you can see where um, uh, this many four states, which have different, uh, many uh, different M states coming from different L states, uh, which generate linear Stark effect, which linear, have a linear dependence on the E field. Well, those uh, low L states, uh, due to quantum defects, um, they are removed from the manifold, and uh, they have this uh, second order uh, uh, Stark effect, which have a, uh, quadratically depends on the E field. And uh, here is how the energy level shift depends on the E field for the linear stack effect. This is for the uh, uh, quadratic second order stack effect. And uh, probably what is interesting is from the uh, second order elect uh, sorry second order stack effect, we can uh, extract a so-called polarizability, uh, which um, is the energy shift related to uh, E square and uh, this uh, uh, proportional uh, uh, factor. An uh, important thing to note is the scaling laws. And if you work out how all this uh, different uh, uh, dipole moment and uh, the energy different, how they're scaling with the n, then you can get the polarizability scale as n to the seven. That's basically meaning, again, it's uh, just very sensitive to electric field. And uh, the, the higher the n, is it become more sensitive. Um, so this is some uh, experimental star map people use to uh, measure electric field. And uh, so again, this is the measured uh, star map and uh, this is simulation. You can see how they match together quite nicely. So probably uh, 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 the next uh, part I want to talk is the dipole-dipole interaction. This is um, uh, um, again resulting to quite many uh, interesting uh, physics. So I start with a interaction of two classical dipoles, static dipoles, which um, pretty much you all know from uh, elementary uh, EM course. And uh, this is how the two dipoles are coupled each other and related to their separations. Uh, however, as you remembered, um, the quantum states, uh, if they're isolated atoms, um, if they are in well-defined uh, quantum state, they don't really process dipoles because the uh, uh, parity uh, uh, conservation. So therefore, probably more related to the dipole-dipole interaction of Rydberg atoms are um, this two classical oscillating picture. We'll see how this works in the quantum regime. So essentially, if the two dipoles are not static, but oscillating, and uh, then essentially, but oscillating uh, synchronously, basically in similar kind of uh, frequency. And essentially, they still have this type of, uh, um, well, uh, energy uh, uh, interaction formula, except due to some frequency average, there is a factor of two. Important thing is, uh, I want to introduce this uh, oscillating dipole is because the dipole-dipole interaction between atoms, Rydberg atom, uh, really shows somewhat uh, being understood through this oscillating uh, dipole uh, uh, picture. So uh, as I mentioned, essentially the well-defined uh, quantum states of isolated atom, it doesn't really have possess a dipole moment. But if there is a external electric field on, and uh, then of course dipole, the atom being polarized, then they de develop a certain permanent dipoles and this dipole can interact with each other. Essentially, this kind of dipole-dipole uh, interaction in external field, um, the permanent dipole due to the external field, is equivalent pretty much to this uh, static dipole-dipole uh, 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 interactions. However, um, probably more common, uh, people talk about the, in the situations about dipole-dipole interaction, is related to this kind of oscillating picture. Uh, there's a many, um, examples, how can you look at this? This is a, here, I gave one of those. So this is atomic states of atoms. Then you have this NS states. If you make a laser excitation to two atoms to the NS states, you think they're just two atoms in NS state. They, each of them don't process any dipole moment. However, one have to think they dipole couple to upper 
and uh, upper P state, a uh, lower P state. And uh, then the uh, dipole dipole interaction between these two NS states really a pair state of NS, NS coupled to NP, NP. And uh, these two pair states are coupled, dipole coupled to each other. Is it really in this sense? And each coupling, as I mentioned, they can kind of be understood as this uh, oscillating dipoles, which is external, uh, uh, is a, a dipole coupling. This is um, uh, through oscillating dipoles, and this oscillating dipoles kind of exchange energy. This is a kind of dipole coupling picture. And this is some details how this, uh, um, you can, uh, uh, Sorry, you can uh, uh, diagonalize uh, the, the Hamiltonian and calculate the dipole-dipole interaction. Basically, these two states are dipole coupled uh, through this. This is, a, again, kind of simplified uh, dipole coupling. And uh, then these states have certain detunings. And depends on how big the detuning compared to this coupling terms, it can be either uh, one was interaction or dipole-dipole interactions. And, uh, so when you have uh, this delta much bigger than the coupling term, and if you work out this, and uh, this is uh, uh, where roughly the energy shift uh, you get, and which proportional to r to the six, and uh, essentially this is kind of a one to one interaction. And uh, uh, this uh, C6 coefficient is going to be proportional to n to the 11th. However, if this coupling term much bigger than delta, and uh, then essentially this term, if you can approximate to be zero, and this is a dipole-dipole interaction. So what I'm really trying to emphasize here is whether or not it is a dipole-dipole or one of us have R third or R six dependence, it really depends on A, where you are at along this uh, atom separations. You're at here, there have very uh, small R, very strong coupling, then there are a dipole-dipole, or is here, then it could be one of us. And another is this um, delta essentially can be detuned, uh, can be tuned uh, by um, E field. This is, uh, again, energy level picture, as you can see. And at the zero field, those levels, they are not uh, degenerate. Uh, the energy levels are different. But in the external field, this energy level shift due to Stark effect, eventually at some point, this energy level different become the same, and therefore this delta really becomes zero. So this is also another way. So the, the take home message here, this is a little bit busy. Take home message here is uh, uh, the dipole-dipole interactions between uh, Rydberg atoms are huge. They're at the gigahertz level. And uh, also in the long range, we're talking about a few microns. Again, they're highly tunable. You can change N, you can uh, change the separations or change the E field to tune them. So this will give just the many uh, um, possibilities to play with different parameters to study different uh, uh, phenomena. So one of the important consequences of the dipole-dipole uh, interaction is so-called dipole blockade. This is probably also um, many of you or all of you have heard. So essentially, what dipole excitation blockade is because these strong interactions and uh, uh, the second excitation of Rydberg states are being blocked. If you're looking at this energy level diagram we just look at, so essentially when the atoms are very separated, they don't interact much, and the excitation can just easily make, promote two atoms both to the Rydberg states. But when, if the two atoms are very close to each other, their dipole-dipole interaction is very big. If it's bigger than the the, uh, the, the, the laser land width, and essentially the second excitation, there is no level there, so the second excitation being blocked. So this is so-called dipole blockade. There are also quite many consequences and uh, interesting consequences of this effect. So this is a picturized how this blockade effect. So basically for the atoms near the first excitation, they cannot be excited to Rydberg, but is some distance away, they can. So this uh, distance, uh, the, the spherical volume within this distance is called a blockade sphere, or this is a blockade radius. So one of the uh, important consequences for dipole blockade is a, a, a deterministic way of making entanglement. So if we only excite one Rydberg uh, atoms, and uh, um, well, then there's just one. And then you can say, if you really observe the Rabi oscillation, there will be kind of uh, Rabi oscillation between 
um, zero and one Rydberg citation. If these two atoms are well separated, you essentially have two individual atoms, and uh, the Rabi oscillation just uh, two Rydberg citation. However, if it's really close to each other due to this blockade, the second excitation is blocked, then the items is not end up as a single Rydberg citation, but rather a uh, um, superposition of ground state and Rydberg states. So this, in a way, uh, um, it's an a, a entanglement between, a excitation entanglement between the two atoms. And then this, and also this Rabi oscillation is no longer omega, but rather square root of omega. This, uh, in a way, you can see if two atoms is close, instead of two atoms oscillating at the Rabi frequency omega, it's rather a single excitation oscillate as square, has a fast oscillation with just square root of two times omega. So this has been uh, uh, experimentally directly demonstrated in very nice ways. This is an experiment done some years ago. Uh, where they load two atoms into um, two optical dipole trap, each hold one atoms. And uh, if they move, if the separation of these two dipole trap are large, here is about 18 microns. All they say is two individual excitations and which is oscillating as some kind of Rabi oscillation omega. However, if they move the two atoms really close, about less than four micron. Indeed, what they observe is this uh, blue curve, which is oscillating at the square root of the um, single Rabi oscillation. And this kind of collect excitations has also been demonstrated uh, with large ensembles. And here, similar kind of thing, instead of two, they do this experiment in a uh, um, large ensemble, and also they can change the atom numbers. And uh, depends on how much atom are included in this uh, block case fair. The Rabi oscillation proportional to square root of n times omega. And this is a, a series of Rabi oscillation they observe. And indeed, if they plot this, it's perfectly formed on this uh, independent curve. So, and with this very nice um, properties of Rydberg atom, there are many interesting directions um, in the uh, uh, Rydberg physics research. And uh, for example, Rydberg, um, many body physics and uh, uh, quantum information, uh, Rydberg molecule and uh, ultra cold uh, plasma, the wave packet dynamic and also single fold, uh, the strong nonlinear effect of Rydberg EIT. So I just very quickly go to few, this is not really any uh, uh, exhaustive or detailed, but rather just to give you a flavor about what's kind of uh, interesting thing are happening with Rydberg. So as we mentioned, um, one of the uh, properties of Rydberg atoms is um, they're strongly coupled to external field. Both uh, 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 field, static field, as well as um, microwave field in the gigahertz or terahertz range. So here is a time of uh, uh, develop uh, sensitive microwave uh, electrometry. So essentially this is a Rydberg EIT, although we didn't say I uh, haven't really introduced. And uh, between these two lasers, if we put on microwave, you can see this EIT kind of split. And the splitting is depends on this uh, microwave strength. Therefore, uh, this is a, uh, well, the bigger, uh, uh, the bigger E field, you have bigger uh, uh, splitting. Therefore, this can be, spectroscopy can be used for uh, microwave electrometry. So the currently, the, well, use the Rydberg, uh, uh, for microwave, the best um, lately paper cited is about three uh, microvolts per centimeter per uh, hertz square root, and which is much better than the current standard antenna-based uh, detection of uh, uh, microwave. And also, this is an attempt to um, study the uh, sorry detect the static field. So this is a, a using the uh, stat stark effect separation and some quantum quantum cast state to squeeze, to increase, increase the sensitivities. So, and also achieve very um, much better uh, sensitivity. This is uh, in static field, therefore it's not as good as the microwave part. So another thing, of course, is the uh, quantum gate. This also has been uh, highly pursued lately. And the proposal is around coming around 2000. And this is some kind of scheme where you can make a quantum phase gate. I won't go through details. 
And uh, for me personally, lately, uh, although the, 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 the proposal originally for neutral atom, lately for me, I think one of the de uh, development, I think it was quite promising uh, for using, uh, uh, for developing fast quantum Rydberg gates is a quantum gates with trapped ions. They use um, alkaline earth atoms trapped into um, ion trapped. Uh, therefore, essentially, uh, the first, because of alkaline earth, they have two valence electrons. The first electron already being ionized, so they become ion to trap there. And then you can use second electrons to perform fast quantum gate. I think this game is quite promising is because the ions can well kind of fix in place and uh, nicely uh, addressed uh, with laser and everything compared to neutral atoms. So anyway, I think this is a kind of uh, nice direction. And uh, the long-range readable molecules, um, so again, this is kind of related to the, uh, uh, how the Rydberg have a, a very high polarizability. And if you have a ground state atom around here, this can highly polarize the Rydberg uh, uh, wave function. You can see this is the rubidium uh, ion here and the, the electron a cloud being pulled by this ground state atom. Therefore, they form kind of bound state. And there is a, a, a some experiment detection of this uh, bound molecular state. This is spectroscopy. And uh, this is for low L states because low L states here, um, we are, they're, they're strongly polarized, but uh, nevertheless, their response to the E field not as strong as the high L state, which is really uh, 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 linear dependence. For the high L state, uh, they have this dramatic drawing about uh, so-called trilobite states. They really pull, you can see this is the core of the Rydberg uh, uh, atom and the, the ground state atom here, they really pull the, uh, um, the wave functions to be this, well, this is simulated form. And uh, so, and again, this molecule have very large uh, dipole moment on the Hasselden device, so this is a, uh, also interesting for, um, well, computations or uh, chemi code chemistries, et cetera. And lately, people have also been working on Rydberg Rydberg molecule, he said. Basically, two atoms are both in Rydberg state. They can bond, uh, form kind of large molecule. This kind of molecule, all on the stage, um, size, size about a few microns, so it's really large, or triple Rydberg molecules. So this is a, quantum many-body physics. And uh, so, uh, again here, I won't give any details. So it's just some kind of artist views where you have this blockade Rydberg citation and whether or not they are strongly correlated form certain patterns. There's some uh, 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 um, experimental observations. And another is the um, lately um, people use two Rydberg states which can be addressed by microwave to form um, spin model or study uh, spin models in lattice. This is a kind of micro trap to trap them. And another interesting is uh, quantum energy uh, transport. And um, because energy transport, of course, happens in many uh, bio cells, bio system, people start also looking into study this kind of quantum effect. Uh, in this, uh, this is a, the example I gave here is a light harvesting uh, proteins where uh, they absorb the items, sorry, they absorb the photons and then how the photons kind of um, uh, transport inside the protein and through the uh, uh, fo foster energy transfer, which is very similar to uh, Rydberg energy transfer. If uh, essentially, um, earlier I mentioned this dipole-dipole interactions um, between Rydberg atoms. Another way of looking at it is really the energy hoppings between uh, uh, different uh, Rydberg, uh, Rydberg atoms um, through this, similar to Foster um, resonance. So uh, there is a research activities to study this effect, a quantum transport, effect, uh, transport phenomena and to what degree they are quantum and how to, uh, uh, how they affecting uh, various transport properties. So with that, I think I'll move on to uh, some research activities in my own lab. So we have some long-term research uh, objectives is to uh, uh, develop some, develop a new type of many-body system and uh, strongly correlated with Rydberg atoms. 
So we have been uh, doing some experimental realizations by preparing atomic ensembles and also making Rydberg citations. And this is a, uh, some what we already achieved and some we are, we are going to be further worked on. And with this, what we already done, we have been doing essentially using EIT optical detection to study Rydberg atoms. And uh, some, we have been working on some uh, Rydberg EIT and uh, microwave optical conversions and uh, working towards EIT imaging of Rydberg atom. And uh, furthermore, we were uh, plan to make river excitations in optical lattice. So this is some, uh, some uh, apparatus and uh, we built to do this. And this is the actual picture of it. Uh, so as I mentioned here, currently we're mainly uh, working on um, EIT optical detection Rydberg atoms. So I will um, give some basic series of uh, using um, optical detection of uh, Rydberg states. So the EIT, which is um, pretty much a well-known phenomenon, just uh, in this case, instead of um, ground states and uh, first excited states, we use ground states, first excited states, and uh, one Rydberg states. So this is kind of a lighter type of uh, uh, EIT. But the basic uh, things are the same. And without coupling light, we get this uh, absorption with, we have a, a, a with, op a, sorry, with coupling light, we have transmissions. And uh, to describe system, we have this um, Maxwell block equations. And the Maxwell, sorry, the block equation part describe atom, and then the Maxwell part describe the light propagations. And uh, so maybe just worth to say a few words about this uh, uh, block equation to describe the light and I, sorry, item light interactions. So there are Hamiltonians, nothing new. So this is a spontaneous emission of the excited states. Probably one interesting thing is I want to mention is it's a third term in this equation is the decoherence due to various mechanisms, which including uh, finite laser land width, also Rydberg interactions. So here, the defacing term actually, how it appears uh, in the probe light spectrum is one of the signature we can use to uh, detecting Rydberg interactions. And uh, then here is a steady state solution. And uh, so from that, we can derive, uh, this is all mathematics, and uh, derive the transmissions. The important thing is in the transmission, we have this um, linear susceptibility, which is um, including many uh, informations on the atoms. And uh, for example, uh, this term is uh, the detuning of the coupling lights. If the atomic energy level is being shifted due to the interactions, uh, which will be reflected in this term and uh, as a, we can extract it from the spectroscopy. And uh, also this um, gamma GR, which is again this decoherence term, uh, is inside this linear susceptibility and uh, is also reflect, uh, reflected on the spectrum. So for example, here is a simulation of the EIT spectrum and uh, where we change different gamma GR, basically different uh, defacing term. And you can see how the spectrum are being changed. Another is if the uh, detuning of the coupling lights is being shifted and uh, the EIT spectrum is also being shifted here. Of course, this detuning here we, um, in simulation, we kind of manually shift it, but in the real experiment is uh, coming, can come from the fact of um, Rydberg, Rydberg interaction. This is uh, essentially the probe transmissions give us information about interactions and defacings and all that. So one of the motivation we do is um, study this is to um, uh, work towards the EIT image of Rydberg atoms. Here is just again a cartoon picture to give a, a, a concept about how this EIT imaging works. So basically, as we mentioned, we set up, this is a, some ensembles uh, where is the ground state and a few Rydberg citations. And for the ground states, we, if we set up the coupling and probe light into the EIT conditions, and uh, they, are, they have this kind of spectrum, if everything on resonance, the probe light is going to transmit it. 
However, for Rydberg atoms and uh, for the ground state atom near Rydberg citations, because this uh, Rydberg block K, their energy, they see an energy level shift. Therefore, the two coupling and probe light is no longer on resonance, and you see this uh, shifted spectrum. So basically meaning if the probe light is put on resonance, and for the item outside the readable block case fair, they're transmitted, but for the items inside, they're absorbed. They're at this kind of spectral position. So therefore, by this way, uh, you can uh, image where the Rydberg atom is. So however, to really do that, we kind of have to, to do a, uh, a serious study to categorize uh, 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 various experimental parameters and uh, found a good parameter window to do this. So this is uh, um, our experimental setup. And uh, then uh, there one, the first effect we started is uh, spatial uh, dependence. Uh, because uh, for Rydberg EIT experiment, uh, because the coupling of first excited state to Rydberg states, uh, this part, this uh, dipole moments are reasonably small. So the, the light has to be focused quite tightly. And uh, therefore, it's kind of introduced some spatial effect. If again, we're, if we're looking at this uh, EIT medium susceptibility, this is again coming from the Maxwell block equations. And now we actually, because the beam is not um, homogeneous, but rather, rather tightly focused, so we kind of have to include all the space dependent term. And uh, this is a atomic cloud, have a, an atomic density distribution. The um, coupling light also have a, a spatial uh, dependence. And uh, therefore, essentially, uh, especially this coupling light is not a for the probe beam going through it, it's not really a, um, uh, 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 well, this omega C is not constant. Therefore, it's form kind of lensing effect. It's like a lens where, because the light at a different part of this coupling beam, they, they say different uh, uh, susceptibilities. Therefore, they say different index refractions. Uh, essentially, um, it's, uh, the light passing through, like saying a lens effect. And uh, this is a kind of uh, experimental result. So if we scan the spectroscopy, and we can see some part of the, the light is highly focused, and which the light is, so one is basically meaning the original probe light is tra fully transmitted. And, uh, but here is supposed to be one, but due to the lensing effect, uh, the intensity is highly increases increased. This can all be also be seen in this uh, 2D uh, image of the, pass, the light passing through. And um, here uh, you can see that the, the light is, well, you kind of have to, this is a, this is a, a, a series of imaging across different uh, uh, detunings. You kind of have to compare the image which are symmetric to the uh, zero detunings. And on the left side, which corresponds to highly focused, uh, high intensity. And on the right-hand side, the, the, the blue side, which is somewhat defocused and had low intensities. And uh, another, as I mentioned, to really do the imaging, we kind of have to study how the interaction shifting the EIT windows. And uh, this is uh, some spectroscopy study of uh, 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 the interaction effect. So, and uh, yeah, this is also some uh, atomic density dependence. So uh, now I'm going to move on a slightly different um, topics, which is not exactly towards um, imaging Rydberg atoms, but it's also related. It's also using a kind of Rydberg EIT related. It's a microwave to optical conversion uh, uh, using uh, Rydberg atoms. So uh, the motivation for microwave optical conversion, and uh, here is a spectrum of uh, EM waves um, from X-rays to uh, uh, radio waves. And of course, they'll be kind of um, useful where um, we can convert from one bandwidth to another and this kind of uh, 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 conversion between 
different frequency signals can found classical applications in classical communication, class networks. And also probably is another, um, also important is they're important, this is a one way to generating EM spectrum which are not available uh, through other means. And for example, Parohas wave and uh, currently is compared to the um, optical wavelengths or the microwave or radio wave, it's a difficult to generate coherent, uh, high power coherent uh, uh, parahertz waves. And so usually they're typically generated by nonlinear effect to uh, make conversion from other frequency band. So of course in quantum applications, this kind of conversion also become quite important lately. Uh, because uh, to really make a quantum network, this is nowadays well known, we need a quantum hybrid quantum systems. There's a whole bunch of different quantum systems which have a nice properties for some kind of, uh, 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 some kind of task in quantum network. And for example, this superconducting qubit lately has been um, quite, become quite promising for uh, quantum qubit, uh, quantum uh, computations. And uh, however, because they're operating at the microwave photons, uh, the microwave photon are difficult to um, transmit through long distance. And therefore, there are needs to, um, inco sorry, to transfer the quantum state at the microwave frequency to optical free frequency for uh, long distance uh, transmission. So there are many other different, essentially the, the, the message here is all these quantum systems, uh, they need to work together to form a quantum network and however they work at the different free energy range. It would be nice where quantum states can transfer between those quantum systems to form a quantum network. So there has been various uh, schemes people work on to um, realize this uh, 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 microwave, coherent microwave to optical conversions. And uh, especially, uh, the example I gave here is particularly working towards um, to build quantum, uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, hybrid systems. So the few example here, they ut utilize different uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, this is few, they are working on the cavity electro optomechanical, basically using the mechanic, optomechanical effect to transfer the, uh, to the make conversion between um, optical photons and the microwave photons. And this is essentially is kind of EOM and use electro-optical uh, uh, effect to convert between optical photons and uh, uh, microwave photons. And uh, this is uh, again frequency mixing, also frequency mixing in atomic ensembles. But here the uh, microwave coupled to the um, magnetic dipole moment of ground states and then there are other optical uh, photons coupled to uh, uh, the states which are coupled by electric dipoles. And among this uh, few free, few, the, 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 the experiment people are working on, uh, to my knowledge, this one probably is at the moment the most advanced. You can achieve 10% uh, conversion by directional. And the others are working towards uh, that directions. So here we uh, work on a new scheme of using Rydberg to make uh, conversions. And essentially it's a frequency mixing involving Rydberg states. So this is a generic um, level diagrams. And uh, the important thing is um, there are some Rydberg levels, in this case it's three and four, which are coupled by microwave. And there are some other uh, levels coupled by the optical uh, light. And uh, in this case it's ground state and first excited, but you can choose others. And here we uh, illustrate is a six wave mixing. And in principle can also work at the four wave or eight wave, and, but each has pros and cons. Probably six wave still maybe uh, the better choice. So the advantage here we think are A, of course, um, as already introduced, electrical 
a dipole moment between Rydberg states are really huge, and they are very strongly coupled to uh, microwave frequencies and um, uh, microwave to terahertz. Also, as we mentioned, uh, uh, the long lifetime is allowed the Rydberg EIT or EIT-like process. Essentially, this uh, uh, frequency mixing in atomic ensembles allowed very uh, high nonlinearity for frequency conversion and can achieve very uh, high conversion efficiency in principle. And thirdly, which are somewhat uh, um, probably less fundamental, are there actually many available frequencies and available uh, for uh, coupled to the uh, Rydberg states from few gigahertz few, to few uh, terahertz. This is some spectrum for rubidium, cesium, and uh, 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 <coughs> atoms. So essentially, um, by just a tune, or of course you can choose different atomic species. If in, in the same atomic species, by tune laser frequencies, you can access different Rydberg levels, therefore access different uh, transition frequencies. And here is uh, some, there is uh, our actual experimental level schemes. And uh, so this is the, uh, we have four input uh, actuarial field, and then this is the microwave field to be converted and uh, then this is the uh, optical field um, generated. And uh, so uh, because it's a frequency mixing and we have this uh, resonance loop, the, so the six waves has to fulfill this uh, resonance loop. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the phase matching conditions also has to be fulfilled for this uh, nonlinear process. And uh, then this is um, the, how the actual setup. So we have a, the optical lights to a blue auxiliary field coming this way and uh, then the P field coming this way and the microwaves um, coming from the side. And uh, the generated light, um, the generated light um, kind of co-propagating with this P field, but uh, we can use, uh, they have different polarizations. We can use PBS to separate them and detect. So this is the observation of the converted light. So we, if we, put everything, um, fulfill this um, resonance loop, and also they are in the phase matching condition, everything. So if we scan the P field, and then we see the, the converted light field uh, have this uh, uh, pronounced peak, essentially some light comes out at this, uh, uh, at this frequency. And uh, this is a P field spectrum we use to uh, categorize the system. And uh, again, um, these are theoretical models to describe the whole process. Um, they're no different from this EIT, just, uh, well, not much different, but just have a many more fields instead of uh, two, of course, this you have six fields and uh, different decasing terms and all that. Um, so uh, one thing is um, the, the generative light have a, a increasing dependence on the uh, optical depths of the ensemble. So here we have this uh, atomic cloud. If we increase the optical depths and the, the power generated will be increased, but to a certain extent will saturate. So this is effect is the formation of the dark states. Essentially, the dark states can form through um, state one, three, five, and uh, as the light propagating through the atomic ensembles, the more atoms are trapped into this space. And uh, once it's every old atom is trapped in this space, so essentially they decouple from light, and then they won't, uh, you, you won't observe more um, converted light anymore. Another is, uh, experiment we do is to demonstrate the coherence of the conversion. So we beat the generated light field um, with another coherent field, which is derived from the same laser from P field. And uh, then basically perform optical heterodyne measurement. And uh, this is the spectrum uh, uh, we get. So we do this for uh, five, so basically we convert, uh, we make the conversion for five microseconds and then we do optical heterodyne measurement. You can see this uh, nice spectrum for um, sync function spectrum for five microsecond long pulse. 
And also, if we modulate the phase of the microwaves, we can extract in the same phase modulation in optical field. So this is basic meaning is really coherently transfer the phase information from the microwave field to optical field. And this is a study of bandwidth. So, uh, so if we change the detune the microwave frequencies, uh, we can still generate the light. So the bandwidth roughly about uh, four megahertz, and which is probably at the moment the largest around all the conversion scheme available. And uh, also, we calculate the conversion efficiencies. And uh, in this, because this is uh, some proof of principle demonstration, so we don't really focus our microwave very nicely. You can see we just uh, launched the microwave through the uh, uh, antenna, gain hour antenna, and let it um, get into the conversion medium, which is this atomic cloud overlapping with uh, 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 different fields. And then we calculate the microwave, how much is a f flux into this medium, and uh, uh, calculate uh, the optical photons um, being converted. And uh, so at the moment, we achieved roughly about conversion efficiency about 3%. And one of the limiting factor is our geometrical, this, um, because we have this very elongated uh, 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 conversion medium. Actually, it doesn't really, uh, the picture here doesn't really proportional. So the length is about two, mi two millimeters, but the size about 100 microns. So it's very long thin. So make, which makes this uh, geometrical factors, uh, SL divided by SM is really small. So in case if we put the microwave co-propagating, this geometrical factor can become one. Therefore we can achieve on the order of eight zero, which is um, uh, roughly about 0.2 on that order. It is a little bit depends on the details. So anyway, uh, so here is a little bit outlook on this work. And of course, we kind of really have to uh, further improve the conversion efficiency, which as I mentioned, we need a, a better geometry and uh, to enhance the conversion efficiency. Also, eventually we really have to focus the microwave down, have a better overlap of microwave to the with the conversion medium. And also to further increase, we kind of have to optimize the detunings and uh, to minimize defacing, scattering, etc. And uh, furthermore, of course, um, this conversion, um, it can have lead to various um, applications, depends on um, what kind of um, application people are interested. And uh, to really work, um, to really develop converters for um, quantum hybrid system. One has to think about to interface this conversion medium with a superconducting qubit or other quantum systems. And here is one example where the atomic cloud are somewhat um, on, the, uh, uh, on the near surface of the uh, superconducting uh, uh, circuit resonators. And uh, then it's also coupled to optical cavities where this kind of conversion can convert the microwave photons of um, superconducting resonator to optical field. And of course, another possibility is, um, possible application is realized conversion in thermal vapor cell. So there are also several um, interesting things here is, I remember we said uh, um, there is a Rydberg atom can be used um, for sensitive microwave detection. And uh, the one we mentioned earlier is through this uh, uh, EIT spectrum, uh, spectroscopy. So here, if the conversion become high efficient enough, essentially we can in real time convert the microwave into optical power and detect. So this is a uh, realized the sensitive microwave detection uh, in the fast sensitive detection in real time. Also, you can possibly generate um, uh, terahertz uh, waves through this nonlinear uh, effect. So anyway, so uh, here is the group members and collaborators who has been working on this experiment, and especially Tibo and Jingshan who has, um, from very beginning of the project, built the apparatus. Jingshan graduated in August, and uh, Christian Sambit and Mark lately uh, joined us, and we have have a long term. 
uh, collaboration with Martin and Dieter, and those are some previous group members. They also uh, make uh, contributions uh, to our um, uh, experimental project. I also like to, uh, well, myself and also on behalf of my group members, I also like to thank technical support and mostly experimental group for their help. And uh, at last, thank you for your attention. Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, in principle, four or eight waves all can work. And I think the reason why six waves, the four waves limiting the optical wavelengths. So basically, if we use four waves, one of those has to be in UV wavelengths. So in UV wavelengths, the ultraviolet. So of course, make it uh, difficult to handle. And the uh, six wave, a is easy, the wavelength is easy to obtain, and also give you flexibility of energy levels. For example, here is a possible we actually, at the moment we do use a 780, it's possible to use like a telecom uh, wavelength even directly to some energy levels. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, depends on what kind of uh, depends on what kind of uh, wavelengths we're talking about. You were talking about really, let's say, um, few tens of well, let's say, few terahertz or few tens of terahertz. Essentially, those can almost propagate in free space. Is that what you're asking, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, you you mean detect them? Uh, well. There are some terahertz detector, it depends on what kind, again, depends on what kind of uh, uh, frequency range. Another way, of course, as I mentioned, this, the Rydberg atom itself can acting as a terahertz detection. So basically, if you generate, you can put a Rydberg cell nearby and kind of converting back in the way. So that's one way you can think about to, to detect, so. Any, any other questions? Mm-hmm. So one is it not equalized? Uh, is this one? Yeah, the one on the bottom. Yes. No, no, no. It's a it's a two different modulations. It's a, sorry. Which one is not synchronized? Yeah, this, 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 this. this one. Oh, okay. So this is time. So this is a two modulations. One is modulate as this is a fourteen. It's a phase modulation at the 14 kilohertz with three pi amplitude, and this is uh, at the seven kilohertz with uh, pi amplitude. So the, yeah. So the, there, there is a black curve, probably you, I don't know oh, no, whether, so, so black. So you are showing the, the detected phase. De yeah, well, detect the phase. Uh, so yeah, the, the green and blue are both detected phase, extracted phase, and uh, if you see this black curve below, these are the phase modulation of the microwave. So. Any, any other questions? Uh, that's a little bit far away <laughs> from now. So. Well, it, it, it depends on what do you mean by uh, crystallized. So, if, 
what do have in mind is uh, essentially, yeah, you have this blockade effect and those block, sorry, excitation blockades, they can somewhat form kind of uh, nice patterns. Yeah, that's one. It's really, really long term. You can think about um, the electron um, kind of, um, they're delocalized, form some kind of, it's no longer bound to the atoms, but uh, the wave, electron wave function from different atoms, they're delocalized, form some kind of crystallization, but this is really, really long away, so, yeah. Any other urgent questions? Not urgent questions? Uh, in that case, uh, thanks a lot, Ben Hui, for this nice award.